All right, is everybody ready to go? Is everybody ready? You all set? So whether this becomes uh, one more hour or two hours is entirely up to you at this point, right? And this is, let's, let's be engaged in this section because we're gonna use uh, Tori as our example and Tori's graciously volunteered for us. So Tori's from the PAPE office. Uh, so we're gonna build something like this up from scratch. Now as, as she starts building out <coughs> her example, I want you to keep in mind that uh, there's, there's a ton of different ways to approach this, right? And so I'm gonna preface this by saying that, you know, when you're creating a digital marketing strategy and you've got an objective, and we're gonna go through the different objectives and all of the different strategies and whatnot, I'm gonna throw a couple of them out right now at you. So for example, with my condo example, it was to build a list of condo home, uh, condo owners in a particular area, how do I do this by offering a, a direct mail piece, and eventually I was doing it online as well, to direct them to a landing page where they can get information about how to sell their condo should they decide to do it in the future. They get that information for free, end up signing up to my list, right, where I constantly communicate to them what's happening in their particular neighborhood, right? So with Zillow, with um, you know House Sigma, all of these different companies right now, and with Trev releasing the sold information that's coming out, it's a battle for attention. And one of the attention that we need is to generate as big a list as possible of particular people or homeowners in a specific area in order for us to be the ones to communicate to them before they reach somebody else, right? So if you were to draw this out, your campaign, right? I mean, here would be your list, right? So <laughs> You want to build up a list, a database, and a lot of you have CRMs, you have databases, right? What the purpose of that list is entirely up to you. Mine was condo homeowners, as condo owner. Okay, uh, yours could be uh, first-time buyers. You could, yours could be investors. Yours could be investors of small business looking to buy a restaurant, right? It could be a whole ton of different things. It could be a particular uh, neighborhood, so homeowners in a particular neighborhood, right? And your objective is to grow this list by feeding. You know, people into it, but how do you do that? Uh, when we put this together, we have something that's a landing page, right? A landing page is where you're gonna get somebody to sign up. Now, you could manually in MailChimp add people into that list. So for example, let's say you're holding a community event, right? And your list is for residents of a particular neighborhood or area, right? You might be holding an event, you might be giving away um, sort of prize, and in order for them to enter the prize, they have to put in their name, email address, or whatever on an entry form. Right, so some of our agents out in Durham recently, I think it was the Orno Fair or something like that, right? So uh, the Orno Fair, they had a giveaway and they were collecting ballots and that's how you could also build a list, right? So there's tons of different ways. Today what we're gonna talk about though is landing pages. Right? How, how do you create a landing page with a message that is relevant to the person who you want to add to this list, right? Then there's how do you have somebody find your landing page? Right? So there's a ton of different ways in order for you to be able to do this. One way is through, of course, direct mail, right? When you're sending direct mail out, you're sending out a flyer. And it could be something like what I had is, you know, how do you get your uh, top dollar for your condo? You visit this website to find out. Or you know, a free report uh, of some sort. Or a market update of some sort, right? So you can send out a direct mail postcard. Or you can do ads, right? Ads could be on social media. Facebook ads, Instagram ads. And the reason why I wanted all of you to have a, a Facebook business page is because in order for you to be able to do ads on Facebook, you have to have a business page. So if you don't have a business page, you won't be able to do ads and you won't be able to do that part of it. But you are able to print out a flyer or put something on your uh, business card. Like if you're the uh, commercial restaurant person in Toronto, you know, get a list of restaurants for sale, visit www.whatever.com, right? Or if your niche is, um, I don't know, uh, motels and hotels. You know, find the, the most uh, profitable hotels or motels within the GTA area, or whatever it is, right? You can promote it that way. Um, so what we're gonna build today, uh, the story, <laughs> story's gonna identify what is her objective, uh, what is her target area, or her target demographic, uh, how do we put together a list, right? How do we create a landing page to, to for us to be able to get signups for that list? Um, now, one of the key things here that I need to mention to you before we get started is in order for somebody to exchange 
their name and email or contact information with you. So for those of you who are active door knockers, right? Or for those of you who have ever been able to get somebody to give you a name, email, address, phone number, whatever, what is it that you offer to them? You tell them we let you know if a house comes to market, they find the case. So like a one one information, house comes to market, what else? A book. What else? A trade. A newsletter. A trade. What is that called? Value. 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 Value, yeah. That's exactly it. You've got to have a value exchange. In order for you to be able to earn attention, right, from your prospects, you've got to have a something of value to be exchanged for that information. How many of you recently got onto Facebook or Instagram and you see an ad, right? How to make a hundred thousand plus in your next three months of real estate, right? And then you put in your name and email because it promised you something, a report of some sort, or a video, or a tutorial, or a course, right? Or a free sample, right? So there's gonna be something of value. And when we set up Tori's example, this is the stuff that we've gotta think about, right? And I'm gonna go through some of these things so that you realize that even within Remax Hallmark, there's tons of things of value. Even within the Remax brand, there's tons of things of value that you don't necessarily have to create for yourself, but you can market it so that you can exchange that thing of value for contact information. Does that make sense? So let's get started with Tori's example. So Tori, yeah, we're going to be building up a list, right? What is what is your with this digital marketing uh, strategy of yours? What is your objective? Like, what is uh, what is it that you want to be able to achieve? To get more appointments in more listing appointments, so leads for people selling their homes. Right, so leads for people selling their homes. In which area? Uh, Toronto East, so Riverdale, Leslieville. Riverdale and Leslieville. And how do we go about yeah. attracting? Um, what do you think? I could entice them to get on a sold list. Okay. And you guys can also yell out stuff yeah. as we go along. So, so I'll a tell bi you. Bi weekly GTA wide sold list. Mm -hmm. Um, I could uh, try and put something out there that, um, something around uh, how can you sell your house for less stress and more money. I'm not quite sure. Okay. That would be more of an appointment enticement, getting okay. in the door. Yes. What are your expectations when somebody signs up your list? How soon will they uh, sell their home for you? Um, One day, you, you a mean week? How, what do you mean? How long can, from, from market yes. to, oh, um, seven days. Seven days? Yeah. Okay. So you want somebody to sign up and within seven days list their house? Oh. I, oh, sorry, I thought you meant how long will it take me from the for sale sign to the, like how many days on market? Oh, okay, yeah, no, like. Um, okay, oh, well, I'd say depending on the state of their house, mm -hmm. I probably need um, two weeks. Two weeks, okay. So that question is very important, why? Because I want each and every single one of you to think about this in your own campaigns. You expect to send a flyer and get a listing right away, right? Or do you expect that somebody who has never heard of you before will all of a sudden say, hey, this is the realtor that I've been looking for my entire life. Let me list my house through them, right? What you've got to remember is that any kind of marketing that you do, part of the building of the brand awareness is the repetition of it, right? So in psychology, there's a study that they did that, you know, basically for you to be able to get somebody's trust, you know, this happens over times of repetitive exposure, right? For some of you, it's the first time for you to see me. So you probably are wondering, you know, what is this guy talking about? Is I'm still called? wondering. He's still wondering. <laughs> right? But some of you, you've seen me uh, and have interacted with me and have worked with me. And so you have a little bit of a higher level of trust. So just think of it that way. If I show up at your door and you have no idea who I am, why are you going to trust that I'm the realtor that you should be working with? And then you ask yourself, you know, when you're affiliated with a brand such as Remax, and Remax has spent millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars, right? Anna Maria, by the way, is a new agent looking to join a company. And I just love plugging this stuff in because it's sort of like a quasi sales pitch to her. 
But even if she wasn't in the room, right? Remax has spent millions and millions and millions of dollars. Have a look at the public league. It's publicly traded in the U.S. Have a look at the um, annual report. You'll see how much money Remax spends in marketing compared to, let's say, Century 21 or Home Life or any other company, right? So again, the question comes to you is that when Tori starts doing this, does she expect to send a flyer once and nobody knows her, and then all of a sudden everybody's gonna decide. Now when you're leveraging a brand like Remax, that sort of is several points in your favor, right? Why do you think that is? The brand's recognition on well, top the of The brand's recognizable? <laughs> Just like when you are working as part of a team, and so I get it, some people work as part of a team because when you do that, right, you have that recognition, that instant recognition, If you're even if you were a completely brand new agent. Not only are you with Remax, but you're with a top producing Remax Hallmark team in your particular neighborhood. Does that help? I mean, you guys, does that help with uh, door knocking? When somebody recognizes? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Right? So your objective when you're creating this campaign is not like after a week or two weeks or after a few months you're gone. Once you start a strategy like this, I want you to continue building it up because that's the first challenge, right? It takes, it can take a year and a half a year, a year and a half, two years before you make your first sale. Uh, I was speaking with one of our Bayview agents and they started a direct mail campaign uh, last spring. They just made their first sale last month. But mind you, it was a buy and a sell, which is 75 grand in commission. But guess how much money they spent to get to that point, right? They practically just broke even. But guess what the brand equity is gonna be from that point forward? How much will their second sale and third sale and fifth sale and tenth sale cost, right? So, so, so your question is, you might get a lead mm -hmm. the very next day, yes. but it might take a year to get a deal of it. Exactly. Right? So the good news is for those of you who have a sustainable referral-based income or other sources of income, that's great. At least you're going to be able to pay your way, pay your way into uh, doing this kind of a strategy. But for those of you who are starting from scratch, and I know it because it took me about a year and a half before I got my first sale after farming with those flyers. So I didn't always have 24 souls on a flyer, right? It started with no soul, then just my big head behind a building or in front of a building and saying, you know, list with me, right? I'm great, whatever, you know what I mean? It takes time for those results to happen. You guys might think it happens overnight when you see that happen, but you have no idea what it takes, especially for the new agents, you have no idea what it takes for somebody to reach that point. So with that said, Tori's gonna be building a list which is gonna accumulate um, over time but remember, what we're talking about after earning the attention is engaging in conversation, right? So what are you gonna do constantly in order for you to be able to engage in conversation? Tori said a, a sold list, maybe bi-weekly, what else? Um, market assessments, so market assessment, assessment of their uh, property home value. Now when you do an assessment, is it at scale or is it individual? Well, this is all me just coming up with how I'm gonna, I don't currently, I do them only on request, on but request, I've never yeah. put it out there like that. Yeah. So I'm, I mean, that's something I could do. Yeah, so we can design um, a campaign that identifies. And I mean, one of the things that I want you to remember is the word scale, mm -hmm. right? If you're going to do this, and you're going to realize that this is an ongoing, constant communication that you have to have with your market area, and if you want to derive results from this, your communication has to be at scale. Meaning even though you're talking to that many people, right, and scaling it out, the communication should still be personable, personable enough that it's relevant to that particular demographic. Mm -hmm. That's why you can't be doing something like, you know, my mailing list is all of GTA. And when I go to Facebook, my campaign is gonna be targeted to all of GTA because you're gonna wash yourself out, right? It could be a very specific postal code. It could be one building. This is how I got started, one building. Right? So it could be that, or it could be a specific niche. It could be first time buyers in Toronto. Sure, do all of Toronto if it's a first time buyer, age you know, 25 to 30, still living with the parents, right? If that's your social profile of somebody who you're trying to reach, right? So you gotta be very clear on what that message is. So for Tori, it's a certain area. She's gonna compile a sold list, and she's gonna be sharing bi-weekly what is sold in that particular area. Right? Now, how are you gonna do that? Are you gonna do it by video, or are you gonna do it just by email? Uh, email. By email. But okay. maybe a video would be more compelling, but I'm quite petrified of videos. Okay, I we're gonna make you even more <laughs> petrified because you're gonna have to make it. <laughs> 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 you're gonna make a video today. 
<laughs> right? What else? Does, it, does this make sense so far? Right? So the first step that we're going to do is that, you know, this is, this is still pretty big, right? Riverdale, Riverdale and Leslieville is still pretty big. Um, we're going to narrow it down yeah. to a particular area. Okay. So what do you want to narrow it down to? Um, Riverdale or Leslie? Could be one or the other. North Riverdale? North Riverdale, right? What's supposed to go for North Riverdale? M4K. M4K. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a list of homeowners who live in M4K, right? Let's go to the next. We're going to create a list of homeowners who live in M4K. Now, if you're door knocking and if you're doing all that other stuff, this is also still very relevant because the, the difference here is we're going to be doing a landing page, which is what we call digital door knocking, right? But if you're doing actual door knocking and you're building up a list, you're door knocking in M4K and you're building up that list by saying something like, you know, I could give you updates about what's happening in our neighborhood. You want to sign up for this mailing list, right? So we're going to create on MailChimp an M4K list. In fact, can you log into your MailChimp account? Yeah. You can just press escape on there. Uh, and then I opened up a tab. Uh, that one. And then go ahead and sign in. So for those of you who have MailChimp and you've never tried it before, it's your first time, go ahead and copy along. And my offer still stands. If you send me a testimonial video about your feedback about this course, you're going to get this entire video sent to you. So you can follow along as well. Does that sound good? I'm giving me one. You're giving me one? Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> and we didn't plan it either, so that all of you guys would be influenced. But Okay. This is where we get technical now, right? We talked about all the theoretical stuff. Now we're going to get hands-on. For those of you who have never created a mailing list before, it's very important because number one, you want to have your own clients to have a mailing list, right? When I'm doing my client mailing list in my own personal sphere, I get about a 50, 55% open rate. The industry average is about 20%. That's a lot, right? I mean, 50 is, I mean, you can think of it as good or bad, but it basically means one out of two people are opening your list. And the industry average, one out of five people are opening it, right? And there's a lot of different tricks. That's an email marketing course altogether. Uh, but for now, what we're going to do is show you on MailChimp, how do you create a mailing list? So it turns out Tori knows MailChimp very well. well. Only through e-marketing. I've never done a landing page. Okay, so we're going to, the landing page yeah. part, we're going to have a bit of fun with. But go ahead and make a list. So for those of you following along, let me get out of the way so you can see this on the video. So am I going into audience? Uh, so go into lists on oh, the very list. top. Okay, yeah. I have lists. She has existing lists. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who want to create a new list, Right? Now in MailChimp, you can create as many lists as you want. So when you finish this course, you can target any particular demographic or geographic area or whatever it happens to be and create lists for that. Um, go ahead and click on create list. John, can we do like a dummy uh, list? For those of you following along, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just play around, okay. play around with it. So, so go ahead and create list. Create, yeah, I hit create list. Mm -hmm. Learn about tech. So create and then list hit create here. list there. Okay, so the list name. Now, the list name is not visible to the actual um, uh, subscribe. Actually, subscribe just will see for this particular one. Uh, so the list name here should be, uh, I think it's Riverdale or, or Leslie. Okay. Was it Riverdale or Leslie? North Riverdale. North Riverdale. So just call it North Riverdale. Okay. 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 The default from email address. Now, there's a question of whether you should make it a company or a personal. What do you think studies have shown is much more effective? Company. Company? company? Personal. 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 Doesn't get oh, spam. Yeah. Okay. Make it personal. If they see Remax, right, Remax is great, don't get me wrong. But when they see it's Remax emailing them, are they going to open it? it? <laughs> right? But if they see it's Tori, they're going to think, you know, maybe that was a, a friend of mine that I met or, you know, whatever it is, right? Make it personal. Uh, default from name, Tori and KJ. If you want to put your last name, you can, right? Campaign URL settings. If you have a paid account, like MailChimp is free, but if you upgrade to a paid account, there's several things you can do. I'm not a salesperson from MailChimp, so I don't really, really care what you do, right? But one of the advantage of doing a paid account is when you create landing pages, instead of a random URL showing up, you can actually program it um, to have part of your domain show up on the MailChimp landing page. So it could say mail dot or mailchimp or whatever slash riverdale homes or whatever slash landing page. 
right? You get to see the new sample anyway. Um, Do I go for now, and customize? Yeah, no? for now we're okay. not going to touch it. Okay. Remind people how you sign up for your list. Part of the spam requirements is that you should tell people why, they, why they're receiving their, your mail, right? So here, you could say you're receiving this because you signed up for a mailing list at the very bottom. Or you can use, reuse it yeah, if you want. So if you click on over here, oh. maybe on this drop down, um, pick one of the ones that you use regularly. Okay. Not all of them are in that postal code. Does that matter? Uh, no. That's just for the reminder about why okay. you're receiving this. So you could do market watch anyway. So you're receiving this email because you have expressed an interest in Toronto real estate, you have bought or sold with me, or you're simply someone I consider a friend. But you can use it, that's fine, right? Uh, contact information, you could use your house if you want to use your house. I recommend use your office address, it's fine. Again, that's just for the requirements of uh, can spam. Like, I mean, you have to have your address on there uh, in order for you to be able to send mail. So if you want to use your office address, go ahead and use your office What's address. What's the address? address? Good question. 724. Thank you, Make it relevant to where you're operating out of. So because each of these lists, you can have a separate address. If you are one of the realtors that are targeting Toronto area areas, but at the same time you work in Durham and York or wherever, right, create a list and put the address relevant to where the mailing address of uh, the area that you're doing is, right? So because you're part of Hallmark, there's a massive network of addresses you can use. If you're in New York, use a Richmond Hill address. I don't mind, right? go, ahead, go ahead. Uh, if you're down in Toronto, you can use Cape, Leslieville Beach, whatever, right? So you're good? What's the postal? What's the postal? Um, M4M, I don't know. No, okay, I can look it up. Uh, go to remaxhallmark.com. If you want to go to remaxhallmark.com, you'll be able to see. M four K three S N. Thank you, Nikita. Thank you. M four K three S seven. Okay. So go ahead and go down. Phone is optional. Um, forget about the double opt-in for now. Now notifications. Daily summary means at the end of every day you're going to find out how many subscribers signed up. This is good if you track. And, and you should be, you should be tracking how much you're spending on your campaign. So if you spend, a, if you spend 10 bucks on Facebook ads for them to land on this page and you get one email subscriber, what is your cost per email subscriber? 10 bucks, right? The, the way you'll know that is by seeing a daily summary. Or you can get notifications as they happen, like instantaneously. So if somebody signs up, you get to see that right away. It's up to you what you choose, so one by instant one. Instant gratification. Instant <laughs> gratification. That feel good, right? You gotta feel good in today's market. So but not the gun. Quick on save. What, what did you put on form settings? There's enable double opt-in. Uh, ignore it. Oh. Ignore it. Good. Now we've got a mailing list, right? Now here's the fun part. You can add subscribers to that manually or you can create a landing page in order for you to be able to get subscribers in. And once we've created a landing page, of course, we're gonna create the campaign to drive people into the landing page. But now, let's focus on creating that landing page. And this is where it's gonna get fun, right? Uh, so go to campaigns. Yeah. MailChimp now allows you to create landing pages. It used to be just purely email, uh, like newsletter software and all that sort of thing. You had to pay, like I used to pay 150 bucks a month uh, for me to be able to create landing pages using a software called Instapage. Uh, there's Instapage and lead pages. MailChimp is free, right? Now in terms of pros and cons, uh, there is a limited functionality with MailChimp compared to the other software, because the other software you can pretty much edit everything. Uh, here it's kind of fixed how the look is, but over time that'll probably be improved, right? So what Tori has done is she created the name of that, North Riverdale. Maybe you could create, uh, you can add um, North Riverdale Market Report, something like that, right? Something appropriate, so we know what the landing page is. Um, okay, so Do you want me to go back? let's go back. So just click click on X again. Or oh, sorry, from click on X. Or just exit. Right. So you click on campaigns. Create campaign. Create campaign. So top left, create campaigns, create campaigns, and then here click on landing page. And then create the landing page. Does that make sense? Top left, 
campaigns, when that campaign window pops up, it lets you choose an email campaign or whatever else you want to create. Landing page is one of them, right? So before you click, yeah. you name the name, you name the page, landing page, you choose which uh, mailing list it's supposed to go to. So if you create a landing page, but you don't have a mailing list yet, you're gonna have to go back and create that mailing list, right? Oh, that's why I got stuck. That's right, exactly. <laughs> How, how's Ash doing with his uh, paper? Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Begin. Well, I'm comfortable actually with the paper. <laughs> comfortable with the paper? There you go. Right? You can't listen more. It's old school technology. Exactly. So the thing about MailChimp is that you can create this landing page using drag and drop, right? So this is what it looks like right now. Do you happen to have a picture of North Riverdale in your phone? I have. Uh, the park yeah yeah the park i have, think park? i have okay can you find that on your phone and then on my phone yes. or on my okay or on your if your if your email yeah, is on the computer i think i could yeah. have something in the gallery okay. here okay go ahead and okay so go ahead and look at that okay. now while while tori is doing that part of it keep in mind when you're creating a landing page who is it for them is it for you or is it for them? Is it for you or is it for them? For them, for them. I know all of you are pretty and handsome and good looking and attractive, but I don't want to see your big face on a landing page, you know, enticing somebody to sign up because you're the greatest realtor ever, right? This is for them. And this is based on proven studies, right? And Craig Proctor is one of the realtors who teaches a lot of this stuff. I know a lot of you have heard or seen or gone to Craig Proctor seminars, right? It's the WIIFM right? What's in it for me? Right? Keep that in mind. So when you're creating a landing page and it's about North Riverdale, make it about North Riverdale, not about you. Right? So while Tori is doing that and stealing pictures that are copyrighted, right? just, just for the sake of example. Don't worry. While she's doing that, remember that the campaigns are going to use this. Does everybody get where we are so far, though? Yeah. Does anybody not? No? You have no clue? I have no idea. Okay, so we'll do that. I'm stuck with we're getting something for sure. That's that? Okay, I'm going to get a lot of calls after this. How come you're not letting me um, uh, replace? Oh. Click on replace. And then you open up the desktop. How do you get your image into the MailChimp? Um, yeah, she's doing it right now. So there. Do you want me to go back? There's an example. So, okay, everybody look up here first. What Tori did is she replaced the placeholder by clicking replace. And when she clicked on replace, what, what popped up? So, go ahead and click so on replace. So I went like this, and then I hit and then, upload. Yeah. And then, and then she selected the image. my file from right. the desktop. So it just so happens that you already have an existing uh, gallery of images. I do, but I actually just downloaded this onto she, the desktop because yeah. I didn't have this particular image. So she downloaded that particular one, right? So we're not going to go into uh, you know size of the image and all that sort of thing right now. You know, obviously, uh, you can play around with that. Uh, what would a good headline be here? So you see how you edit within Mailchimp? It's very user friendly and intuitive. You just click on the edit button. But let's say, for example, you want to change this headline. What would a good headline be for this campaign? Get the latest news. Soul report. Soul report. Soul report. Soul report. Soul report. What does soul report mean? What does that mean? I'm a homeowner. What does that mean? Soul report. What does that mean? All the secret soul prizes. Secret soul prizes? No, I mean that means the information that other people that don't have. Why don't we ask? Why don't we ask a question? Why don't we ask a question? What's your homework if we want? No, How much did your neighbor's home <laughs> sold for? Yeah. Right? That's as a question. So this is North Riverdale. Could be something like, you know, what's your North Riverdale home worth? Right? Or how much did that North Riverdale uh, household for across the street? Something like that. How does your right? home compare to the other recent home? Yeah. Like shorter? Yeah. Something like that. What's your, so, what's your neighbor's house like? <laughs> <laughs> so you actually know what your house is worth. <laughs> 
or did it self self be like that, right? Now, when we get into more advanced marketing, there's things called A-B testing. How many of you have heard of A-B testing? Yes, I expected, just heard to know, right? Which team are you on, by the way? Krista. Krista? Okay. Um, so A-B testing is basically, you create two landing pages, one says one thing on the headline, the other says something different, and everything else is the same on the page. Or you change an image, and you see what the response rates are. That's when you get into really advanced stuff, mm -hmm. right? You guys, your time is better spent connecting with clients. Um, so for here, it's good to get a, somebody to consult with. I mean, you can bounce ideas off me, right? Guaranteed a lot of realtors are not doing this well. I mean, you guys are probably gonna do this a lot better today than a lot of realtor, realtors out there, which is a good news, right? But you can play around with that. See, what did it sell for? Get the latest on North Riverdale home values. Get the latest info, or whatever it is, right? right here's a question. Yeah. Is this compelling anymore? Is this compelling? Yeah. Yeah. Now that people can get sold data on their own, is it still compelling? Not but you know what? Not everybody knows these things. I've talked to people and they don't even know about the sold data. So we, know we, know we know because we're in the industry. Here's, here's something that I've been bringing up in our office meetings. How many of you use Collab here? Collab. <laughs> I'm surprised how many of you do not use Collab. Oh, I know. Who doesn't you like it? I don't like Tom it. Tom doesn't like it, why? Because I kind of like, maybe I'm too happy, I like, I, I like to show them what I think they might like. Okay, fair enough. The search criteria is not the same. Uh, it is, actually, it is. I don't know. It opens up the too much to many yeah. possibilities for them. They think here's, they like. here's my prediction, though. I, I believe that because Collab, by definition, is a, a VOW, is a VOW, that Trev should be able to switch the soul reports on collab and so when you run a campaign like this and remember we said earlier that this is a battle for attention who's going to reach the consumer first is it going to be you is it going to be zillow is it going to be somebody else but if you're the one who reaches them first and you're on their mailing you're on your mailing list first and collab gets turned on to vow or whatever and starts to eat sold prices out once you've got somebody signed up on collab you've got their attention they don't need to go anywhere else right so with Collab right now for buyer alerts, it's instantaneous based on their criteria. Imagine, and I, I'm just making prediction, but imagine that Trev allows sold data, and they should, Trev allows sold data to be fed directly to your consumer. So if this, uh, this particular house sold, Collab sends it out instantaneously, just like they send out instantaneous buyer alerts, right? So I think this is still gonna be compelling. And people are curious, and people are greedy. They want the most amount of money for their homes. So they want to know what their neighbors are selling for, right? So, but anyway, for the sake of example, uh, this is what we're going to offer. I uh, use the space to tell people what they are signing up for. So this is a further explanation, right? What do, what do I expect to get if I sign up for this list? And if it's not compelling enough, you're not going to get sign-ups, right? So remember with my condo, like go to condosellersguide.com. If that's not compelling enough, you're not going to sign up, right? But I was able to get sign-ups, listings, and sales from that because it was compelling enough for somebody to sign up, receive a free guide on how to sell a condo. Right, so when somebody's signing up for your list, make sure your offer is compelling enough. Right, is there enough credibility there? Like, do they see you as a credible source of information? So Tori's gonna play around with that a bit. If you're considering buying or selling, having the latest data on, I'm distracted. Right? Anybody have any questions so far? It's fun. It's fun? How many of you find this fun? Cash? Fun? I have a blast. Have a blast. <laughs> he doesn't even have a laptop. So fun. <laughs> exactly. Ah, but the paper is good to draw that stuff right away quickly, yes. <laughs> computer. Yeah, computer. Who needs computers, right? So while Tori is writing that up, What's about to happen is going to be pretty fun too, which in the nine week, nine week boot camp, I taught an entire one hour and a half session just on video, stuff like, you know, the setup here, it's pretty basic, right? But we're going to actually shoot a video, Tori's going to shoot the video, and instead of it just being just a map, we're going to embed a video into this landing page, right? So when you play your, when you, when somebody clicks on the Facebook ad or 
you know, when they see the Facebook ad as a video, which could be the same thing, right? You're actually going to see yourself uh, on the landing page talking about what it what it is that the consumer should expect. Why do you think we should use video these days? More engaging. More engaging. What else? A lot of people watch on the phone just when they're yeah, so people watch. Yeah. And you subtitle it because some phones they keep on silent. But what else? Trust, right? So on video, I mean, this is just how people are. When you start talking, or when they start interacting with you, when they start to see you interacting on the video, they're going to make a judgment right away. Should I deal with this person or not? Right? How many of you have seen videos online as you're going to the feed, and they're trying to sell you stuff? And right away you're like, ah, oh, that's sleazy salesperson. Oh, this is, you know, this is something I, right? Right away. So I don't think you should be shy about video why. Because you're all very, again, talented, attractive, beautiful, handsome. You're all great realtors, right? Don't be afraid. Like, this is how you are in real life. So the difference is just you're going to be on video. But don't be shy being on the end of the camera, right? You can be on the other side of it, right? So when Tori finishes that, we're actually going to shoot a video today on her phone. She's going to upload it, and we're going to embed it into this landing page. You're gonna get to learn a lot of stuff. And this is the same thing you can do on yours as well. So that makes sense? Yes. So this is the landing page she's mm -hmm. and then she's gonna once she's done, she's gonna send it out to her list. We're gonna find we're gonna find out what's next oh. after she finishes the landing page. Right? Because again, the landing page is here, this is the list. Question become the question is how do we get people to the landing page? <laughs> And we're going to cover that too before we finish up today. You're writing an essay there? Maybe. I might be. I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> well, it's just a test, right? It's a test. Yeah. But it's okay. fine. Like, this is what I want you to show, what I want to show you in real time and why I decided to do this kind of a format. Instead of me telling you what to do, you guys, through Tori, are actually doing it. Right? So I want you to see realistically how long would it take me to do something like this. There are companies that will do this for you. Some of this kind of cost a lot of money, right? Some of these guys spend, uh, sorry, some of them will charge you a lot of money just to get to this point. I had a realtor before I came here, I was at Bayview, and for a landing page, they charged 350 bucks, right? How much would you charge for a landing page? How much should I? How much would I? Yes, uh, yes. Yeah, it's 300. About that much. Should it, the landing page is it 100 a month? 100 a month, right? So I mean, imagine that. Twelve hundred a month for someone to design it for you. Not just design it, but like managing and everything. Managing and doing it for you. Is that what you do? Yeah, I also do like for a team, right? <laughs> so not everybody can access your. Anyway, so that's done. What did it sell for? The latest on North America <coughs> Home Value Center. Keep considering blah blah blah, etc. So go ahead and scroll down, please. Start. So here's the next part of your landing page where you're going to ask for the email address. If the value that you're going to be giving is strong enough, you should get to see email signups. If it's not, then what's wrong? It's not, it's not enticing, it's not compelling, right? You can even go be before that, and you know, once we get to this part of it, it may be that you're not even driving enough people to your page, right? So you're going to learn about conversions, meaning how many people do I have to drive from Facebook ad, from Instagram ad, from a postcard, from whatever, how many people do I have to drive from that to my landing page in order for me to be able to get one person to sign up? How many people do I need to have signed up on this list for me to be able to get people to call me? Right? How many calls do I need to get in order for me to be able to, to get an appointment? Does that sound familiar? Right? It's all lead generation. So when you click on this part, what you're going to see is you can start adding fields. Right now, I do teach a course too about Facebook lead ads. If you've ever taken it, I mean, it's a bit more complicated than this. But with Facebook lead ads, Facebook will actually populate that information into the Facebook lead form, right? So what it means is if you're asking for a name, email, address, and phone number, it will actually pop up without them having to type anything because Facebook knows a lot of stuff about you, mm -hmm. right? Now on here, would you ask for their phone number? Yes. Yes or no? How many of you say yes? Yes. How many of you say no? How many of you have no idea what's going on in here? <laughs> Would it be a mandatory field? I don't know. 
Should we ask for I it? I mean, typically well, you're not I mean, supposed to ask for a lot because mm -hmm. they won't engage. But right. now with text messaging and that, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Yeah. If you don't get it in that one time, you might never get it. Mm -hmm. Sadly, what is this a picture of? Funnel. An ice cream cone. <laughs> it's a funnel, right? The idea with your landing page is to try to get as many people into this, right? And over time, it's going to get narrower and narrower to identify the right prospect that's going to be interacting with you. Now, if you ask for a phone number right away, what do you think happens to the number of people coming into your list? If I were to have a landing page and you know I promise you the world, but I asked you for your phone number and your address, would you give it to me? If you had no idea who I was? No. Make it less risky for clients. And it's not to pick on Tori or, or to any of you. I've tried it both ways. Right? I've tried asking for everything. I've tried asking for just name and email. I've even tried asking for just email addresses. The less you ask, the more likely you're going to get a sign up. Why? Because your level of commitment is not as high. They're not sharing any personal information with you. Now, I'm going to set, like, I mean, as an aside, a lot of the stuff that I'm teaching you right now, we actually do for our own recruiting, which is why we know it works. The difference is when you've got a database, which we have, just from a simple email address, we know exactly who that person is, right? So when you start playing around with this kind of stuff, you can start to figure out much more advanced things. But what I want you to focus on right now is just minimizing the number of the, the, how much information. You may want to ask for first name, and I'll tell you why. So click on first name and email. MailChimp allows you to personalize the first name, last name fields, and all that sort of stuff. So imagine sending out an email that says, hey, Bobby, right, as opposed to, hey, right? It starts to make it more personal. Now, a lot of you and I know these tricks, but most of the people out there have no idea. They think that you've typed every single one of these things out, which is not bad at, as far as an impression is concerned, right? So let's even close this, but actually before that, subscribe. Is that compelling enough of a button that you want to press it? No? What would you put in it? What would you put on there? Yeah. So get my free report. Right? Or get on the list. Right? Get on the list. I would put get my free report. Make it free, make it about them. Right? Get my free report. Nah. Exclamation yeah. mark. Sorry, John there. Yes. I'm actually having a hard time here getting from the email address to getting the other fields for first name, mm -hmm. address, that sort of thing. Uh, uh, the the there. Is that there? There. there? Yeah. And it should pop up. Does that work? For those of you who do get stuff, I'm going to stick around. So anything that you have any questions for, right? Especially if you're just writing stuff down on paper. <laughs> any kind of questions, yeah. I definitely not. He's going to beat me up when we get back to the office. <laughs> so you don't want me to do a confirmation message? You can do a confirmation message. So okay. A confirmation message, what is it? Once you sign up, once somebody signs up, they receive a confirmation that they've signed up to your list. Right, it's your choice whether to send it or not. I'm gonna do some something kind of different here, which is where we're gonna start to get into the automation part of this. Mm -hmm. So we'll just leave that uh, okay. for now, just take it off. Oh, did I take I don't know if you left it on or took it off. You can? It just says the option. Oh, that's fine, yeah, no, that's okay. Yeah, that's This is okay. This is just gonna say that you've signed up. So let's leave this right now. Uh, Tori, I want you to grab your phone oh. and pick a nice background. My phone's quite tall. Okay. <laughs> As it turns out. Or somebody may want to try to... Um, pick a nice background. Or stand somewhere. Oh, or, I see. Okay. Or maybe stand here so that the, our camera can see you too. Okay. Stand where? You can set up. So it's always going to shoot a video. Surprise! <laughs> right? This is condo. Okay, I'm going to have to erase a few things. Okay, while you're doing that, we'll set up a nice background. I'm going to pretend it's North River Day. We'll see if we can find it. Anybody have any questions so far? Yes? Is it true that once you send out a mailing list, you can't edit it and, and stuff like once that? Once it's out, yeah, you can. You so can't? You cannot edit it once it's out.
because it's already set. Uh, yeah. But let's see. How about the next time? You, you can, yeah. I guess. Um, Once you send it, just like an email. Like, you know, sometimes well, you right. set up an email and just like, wishing. Modify the list for the yeah. next time. Yes. Well, I guess. Yes, you can do multiple landing pages for one MailChimp account. So you can have as many as you want. like uh, correct information mm -hmm. on it too, or is it? Um, okay, so I'm going to get you that. The disclaimers? Mm -hmm. Yeah, disclaimers you have to do. Now in terms of TREB information, technically, you're not supposed to be sending sold information out just by email unless you have a client relationship, which to me, if somebody opts into a mailing list, I kind of treat that as client relationship so you have to be careful about doing this you know, publicly because the TREBS requirement for you to be able to send sold information out is that it's behind a VOW, which is a password protected website. But as you and I know, when you have a client, regardless of what stage they are in the transaction process, you send them information, sold information for houses and all that sort of thing. Just be very careful about that. Let's pretend you're in front of this house. Does that sound fun? Go ahead and stand in front of that. So while we're doing that, Tori, I want you to think of a script you know, yeah. that you would be How saying. about what I said in that thing? Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> okay. How about You're that? You're in front of the street. It's a nice <laughs> <laughs> Can someone hold it up for me? <laughs> Myself? Hey, this no. story from Remax Hallmark, okay. and if you're curious about what your North Riverdale home is worth, sign up for my mailing list. Okay. Something like that. That's great. Every two weeks, <laughs> I'll send you. Every two weeks, I'll send you a report about what homes you're selling for in our area. If you're thinking about selling your home, feel free to reach out to me. Okay, this is not going to be guys? smooth. I want you guys no. to know that. It's okay. This is just for example purposes, okay. right? In real life, you'd be standing in front of the neighborhood that you're doing. Yeah. Right. Uh, so. Where do I look? Right here. Like, do you look at the camera, or do you look kind of at the uh, camera? Look at the camera. Okay. Well, I'm going to cut off a couple of things just to make it look as real as possible. Like my Ready? Face. <laughs> <laughs> Ready, set, go. Hi, it's Tori from uh, Remax Hallmark. And if you'd like to get on the list to get pricing on North Riverdale, it's the best way to understand market value. Get on the list by clicking the link and I look forward to talking to you soon. Yeah. Awesome. Gonna work. Good. Yeah. You want to take two? Yeah, take two. Take two. Take two. Yeah. Yeah. Now she's ready. Yeah. Now she's ready. Yeah. Now she's ready. Yeah. Okay, ready? Okay. You ready, okay. set, go. Hi, I'm Tori from Remax Hallmark. And um, if you're looking for market value prices in North Riverdale, I have a bi-weekly sold list that you might want to get on. So sign up for the list and you can get more in touch with North, North Riverdale home prices. Thanks. There you go. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tori. So we... I won't be using that, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I just use that to cut it off the, because of the, to make it look as much as possible that you're in front of the house. Okay, so do you have a YouTube account, Tori? Uh, maybe. Um, no, I no? don't actually. Okay, so you're gonna have to sign up for one. Okay. Real quick. Right. right Starting now. <laughs> yes. Like, do I actually have to post that? It's gonna be on a private, so nobody will see it. I'll show you how to do this. I'll show you guys how to do this. Maybe you guys could tell, like, we could all talk about how we do that better. Like, what should I have said, really? That was pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty that was pretty good. good. So I mean, this is like anything with video. It's over time, right? So I know, I know a lot of you, I mean, even myself, right? I had a friend, he's a YouTube producer, uh, doing very successful in back when I started managing in 2008, 2009, or, or something like that. He told me to get into YouTube videos to do tutorials. Mm -hmm. 
Can I listen to him? No. no. Right? So, I mean, he's, he's done a lot of YouTube tutorials, made a lot of money in, in getting YouTube like, channels up, and he's a producer. Real estate or what? No, just anything. No. He did all sorts of stuff. Yoga, gaming, all that sort of thing. Channels. So, we need to create a channel here? Uh, you yeah. need to log, you have to create an account. So, um, um, okay, how do I do that? If you have a G, if you have Gmail, do you have Gmail already? Yes. Yes. So if you have Gmail, you're just going to have to take your account and go to YouTube. So go to YouTube. I'm in YouTube. All right, so go to YouTube. .com. Yeah. Are you signing in? Yeah. Okay, so sign in. And again, I'm doing this not to give Tori a hard time, but I want all of you to see what the process is. Mm -hmm. So when you start doing this on your own, it's not going to look as polished as me because I've done it lots of times and I have all these accounts set up. I want you to show. I wanted to show you guys how it looks like if you don't have any of this stuff set up, right? Or just doing video for the first time. You know what I mean? It's a lot of work. It's fine. You make money. Awesome. Okay. So. Tori's gonna use YouTube oh, as this, this is this is an account. Okay. That I don't know if I can access uh, it. Is that your account? Yeah. But okay. So on YouTube you can upload videos without having it publicly displayed. Meaning as a as a as a setting, it'll only be visible to whoever has the link. So for the purposes of our example, Tori's gonna be uploading it unlisted but she will have the link she's going to use that link to put into the Mailchimp account so when you upload your video on YouTube you're not going to put it up on your channel why so when somebody watches that there's no real content to that video right it's just a call to action so you don't want it to be visible on your channel right so in order for it not to be visible you don't publish it publicly available right and we're going to show you how to do this so Tori you have your email address as well right mm -hmm. on this can you email yourself that video please so when you have it on your phone, if you're on your Apple, you can airdrop it. And then from your airdrop, you can upload it right into YouTube. But because Tori's using this computer, and it's not an Apple, she can't airdrop it either. She's gonna email it to herself first. From her email, she's gonna download it to that computer. From that computer, she can upload it into her uh, YouTube account. And then I'm gonna show you how to link that video to your landing page, right? So while you're doing that, does anybody have any questions? Anybody have any questions? Alvin. <laughs> How many of you have done stuff like this? Or bits and pieces of it? Of course. I mean, <laughs> no more raising your hand for the rest of the session. Right? Okay. Yes. In, in a previous life, I used to produce videos like this a long time ago. And I, I noticed the biggest thing to make it look like it, you spent a lot of money on it was to get good sound. Yes. Get little mics. Mm. Yes. Can you do anything like that with an iPhone? Yes. So while oh. Tori's doing that, let me whip out my video mm. here. So if you go to genre.com slash video, I'm turning this into a sales pitch now, right? <laughs> go to genre.com slash video, I have a list of all the stuff that I use for video, and this is basic stuff, not like advanced you know, uh, very expensive thing. So there's a mic, you can see how very well organized <laughs> I am, but anyway, this is a Boya mic. And when you're doing videos, and if you're outside, and you try to shoot that video with all the noise, you're gonna hear all that stuff going on. Now, iPhones are pretty good that they've started, like, they're sort of able to isolate sound to a certain degree. So you can start shooting yourself on an iPhone, and it's pretty decent, like when you listen to this video, it's probably gonna be pretty decent quality, right? But if you go to joiner.com slash video, I re recommend a couple of uh, lapel mics, like the Boya microphone, which is uh, J-O-H-N-D-E-R dot <coughs> slash video. I recommend all the different stuff that I have, like some of it you can see, like this tripod, so the iPhone stand, yeah. Sorry, I, I don't it's know okay. that it's, it's saying it's too large. Well, I'll try, I didn't, work as an attachment the first time. Okay. So then I might have to do it by mail drop. Okay. But or if you want. You're you're using an iPhone, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, here drop it to me. Okay. 
and then I'll upload it to my YouTube. Okay. Then I'll just show you. So yeah, I recommend using a lapel mic, right? Uh, some of them are wireless. The ones that I use are wired. Now, if you're using an iPhone 7 and onwards, there is an adapter that you have to use to change it from a lightning uh, to stereo, right? Does everybody know what I mean by that? Like, you can't just plug in a mic and do this. There's the adapter that comes with the iPhone 7 and 8 and onward that changes the uh, lightning to stereo. So you can plug it in uh, to stereo. So you eliminated that. Then. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you can't just plug it into that. iPhone can 6, I accept, 5. Jordan? Oh, yeah, go ahead. iPhone and the rest of the iPhone stuff you can. Um, what I would recommend when you're doing videos like this, I mean, sound, sound may actually be more important than the actual video, video quality, to be honest with you, right? Why? Because let's say you have the greatest video, but you have no idea what that person is saying, right? Then there's pretty much no point, right? But you have crappy video, but the best sound, right? At least the message is getting across. Now, if you have both, then that's great. And you require, you know, lighting, all that sort of other stuff for that to happen. But if you're just doing basic market updates and whatnot, then, then you'll be fine. Uh, make sure you just have some sort of a lab. Do so you use transport mm -hmm. If you're doing this on YouTube, so I'm just gonna show you from Tori's uh, example. So when you have the video, what you gotta do on YouTube is you go to your creator. You go to this button here, create video or post, right? where you can upload the video. So for those of you who have never done it before, you just gotta sign up for a YouTube account and upload a video once you have an account set up. And then once you've set up an account and you go upload it here, I'm gonna do it on my computer, that's why you won't be able to see it. There's a drop down here. See it says public, unlisted, private, or scheduled, right? Public means it's gonna appear on your channel, whatever that channel happens to be that you're publishing it to. And you could have multiple channels, uh, like if you're doing your own vlog and then you're doing real estate and you're doing other stuff. Unlisted means it is going to be up there, but only the people who have the link to that will be able to see it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to upload it to my account for now, and then we're going to have Tori uh, link it. I'm going to need your email address yeah. at some point. So right now I'm uploading the video as un as an unlisted, and it's going to be Tori's video. But what I'm going to need from Tori is. Oh, I just hit accept, so I don't know where it went. But I airdropped it, and then I hit accept. It goes to downloads, no? Automatically? Oh, failure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're reaching the two hour mark. So for those of you who want to stay, the, the last part that I'm going to show you, uh, which may take a bit of time too, is how do you actually drive traffic to this landing page? So if you're curious about, like great, you've set up a landing page, all that sort of thing, but you have nobody signing up to the page and you have no idea how people are getting into it. Uh, we're going to look at Facebook advertising today to drive traffic to that specific landing page. Right? After seeing that, and watching this video for reference, you should be able to create a pretty decent landing page and get some signups, right? So I've done this strategy for a couple of different areas within uh, my market area when I was actively trading um, and built up lists like this. And then every single month, uh, for me, I was doing it monthly. Nowadays, you may want to be doing it bi-weekly or even weekly, right? That's how quickly the market gets, you know, fed with information these days. Um, but basically, the idea is you have a list you're constantly communicating to, right? and you're accumulating as many people in that list. So imagine it this way, let's say you have a farm area of a thousand, right? 
from that thousand, you're trying to get a certain percentage of that into your mailing list. Let's say it's 100, 200, 300, 400, right? From that 400, you're communicating to them on a constant basis, right? And from that 400, you're trying to narrow it down to the people who will eventually call you, right? Or when it comes time for them to transact that you were the top of mind realtor. Now, when you combine that with a postcard mailing campaign, neighborhood campaigns, door knocking, open houses, and actual activity in the area, that's when this becomes really magical because of the multiple touch point presence. Right? But remember, every single month, you're in somebody's mailbox, right? email inbox. So, <clears throat> so I have the link. Okay. Um, Try it. How, how do I actually uh, Copy it and paste it to, okay, so copy and paste it into our YouTube link, copy and paste it into the browser bar. And then you should be able to see the video. The sound is on. Let's see uh, Tori's video again. So in your example, this would be in your own YouTube account, right? Let's go back to the mail chain. And it's a story signed in. Okay. You can go to dashboard. Okay. So we'll go back to campaigns and landing page. And on the landing page, show edit it. And we're gonna drop in a block. So we'll go back to content and edit design. And we're gonna drop in a block for the video. So on this right side, you're gonna see a block for video. So scroll down. You see video there? So you're gonna drag it. And click it. Underneath or above? Or um, do I wanna drag the block? I mean, it could be up. It can be above. It could be below the headline. So it could be Here? Uh, above them. This. You can try it there. Right? And then here, add video URL with editor. So you go to the editor here, video URL, and then paste the URL in there. Right? You can turn caption on, and it'll start to caption the video. Press save and close for now, though. Yeah, you can do that. There you go. And there you go. Now you've got a video on your landing page. Wow. Right? Nice. Pretty neat. And we're just in the first hour of doing this hands on product. Um, so, I want you to preview it. So, on the top right, you can click on preview. Let me see if I can get Shen to turn on the sound so you get the full effect of it. Facebook has, I teach an entire session on, like an, hour, an entire two hour session. On. So, should be fine? Yeah. How many of you have to go? Okay, have to go. Okay. Um, it'll be on the video. So, you know the price is, right, for the video? <laughs> right? <laughs> it should be an email. Okay, for those of you who have to go, I'm going to give you my email address. Yeah. Sorry. It's okay, no worries. It's completely okay. So yeah, if you want the video for this whole thing, jonder at remaxhallmark.com. Email me if you want the video. I will email you. Where's my testimonial? Feedback could be good or bad. I don't care if you send me a bad testimonial. I'm not going to obviously put the video anywhere, right? But I want to know how you like this course. And at the same time, I want to be able to promote it to some of our peers and to some of the people outside of our office because I want them to really smart enough when it comes to their digital marketing game, right? Um, so there's gonna be two videos here. I'm gonna upload them onto YouTube with a private link, so you'll only get it. Shoot me a video. Doesn't matter if you say, hey, it's great. No, send me my video. Whatever, I don't care, right? Like, Email me. Lead capturing in action. <laughs> you see that? I practice what I preach. This is called lead capturing, right? This is called signing up for my mailing list, right? 
So right. send me an email. For those of you who have to go, send me an email right now. Mm -hmm. Or give me your business card. I'll email you. And the same way Tori shot the video like this. Very easy. Just shoot a video. Hey, Jonder, I loved your course. You're amazing. Mm -hmm. And send me my video. Right? And then send it to me. That makes sense? For those of you who really just stay, like, we can, maybe 30 more minutes, or five more minutes, and then Q&A after that. I take my time. I'm here until like five or six anyway. So. Thank you so much for the first group. Yeah? Okay. Thank you so much. Do you want me to? Or? Uh, I will do it. Okay. Yeah. So, for those of you who are sticking around, let's click on preview and let's see Tori's awesome job for what she did so far. Right? This is what it's going to look like on the internet. Find on mobile. So go ahead and go down, click on play. Yeah. That's awesome. See? Right? Sorry, I've got to go, but I have a question that I'm not sure if you're going to get to. So, okay. um, so once you figure out how to get people to get to this page and say they sign up, yes. so this information is sent to their email and their first name or whatever, Yes. is it an automated something that's, that's happening after? Yeah, so I forgot about that part. <laughs> okay, that is the actual part that we're going to talk about right now. Oh. Which, uh, other is it like five to ten minutes? It is a five to ten minute process. Five to ten minutes. So that was a nice thing, actually. Thank you so much for queuing that. Um, this is what it looks like on mobile, so that's great. So the actual, again, you guys are not designers. I mean, a lot of you have good aesthetics, like you know what looks good, right? The reason why MailChimp is great is because it helps you create in blocks. Thank you so much, Tori, for, she's done an awesome job so far. And we just need a few, are you, are you doing it or you're, you're good? Okay. So Tori's done an amazing job so far, but I mean, we've got another 30 minutes of work to get out of her, right? Um, if you, if you don't like the design, pay for the design, pay for somebody to do it for you, please. Right? Because nothing worse than you start spending money on this and then there's no conversion because you did a pretty bad job doing a design. And trust me, I've seen a lot of realtors post cards and flyers and you know they just think they're designers. You guys sell houses, you don't design postcards, right? So use a template or use something nice to use uh, like as far as aesthetics. Um, but if you don't if you don't like it, like your own designs, please hire somebody to do it. I'm going to show you the automation part of it now. So click on X, and what we're going to do now, we're just going to save and close this again, and then we're going to go back into campaigns. Uh, finish later, maybe up there. Finish later, and then we're going to go back into campaigns. MailChimp allows you to automate information. So imagine if somebody is watching your, uh, if somebody's on Facebook, sees your ad for North Riverdale Homes at 2 a.m. and they sign up to the list, and at 2.01 they receive an update as to what's happening in the neighborhood. Wouldn't that be cool, right? Now how many of you would have been up at 2.01 a.m. to give them that? Some of you guys are still with me, yeah, yeah. Some of you guys are doing this though, right? Whereas these, Features within this technology available for you actually allows you to automate. So this is what the automation part of MailChimp and a lot of other great software allows you to do. Uh, so you can create a campaign. So go ahead and create a campaign. And there's an email campaign here. So click on email. And then you can call this, again, North Riverdale Report. Right? But maybe you add the word intro to it or welcome message or something like that at the very end. Right? So the gist of what we're trying to do here is that the moment somebody signs up to your list, they receive that first report right away, right? This is something you have to update on a constant basis because if you're doing this bi-weekly, then your bi-weekly bi information changes. So you've got to take your bi-weekly report and put it into your welcome message, right? So when you do, yeah, so when you go here, click on design email. And then now you can choose the different um, different settings in order for you to be able to do this. Let me see. I think we missed. I think I missed one point. Sorry. It's okay. Let me go 
instead of a regular email campaign, you do a triggered, right? So that's the one thing you should make note of. It's a triggered email campaign, right? So the triggered campaign actually already has a preset where you can welcome new subscribers. So that's what we're going to use. So click on welcome new subscribers. Uh, okay, so let's exit go this. Back. Yeah, go back. Yeah, go back. And by default, it's going to say, okay, so let's, let's you know what, let's start from the beginning. So let's exit this. Yeah, there. So go to email. So Nectari, click on email. When you click on email, this is the default, a regular email. So when you're sending out your regular reports, weekly, bi-weekly, whatever, monthly, and if you're getting lost at this point, that's fine, I'm going to stick around and I'm going to show you this part. But triggered is the one that's going to be automated. So triggered and click on welcome new subscribers. Now here's the thing, how many of you, if you're targeting a seller, would love to reach that seller every single week for the next year without sending one single email to them? Let's say for example, your campaign, only, only Marie wants to do it, okay. Oh, so let's say for example, and Alvin, okay, two of you guys want to do it, everybody else is doing, okay, three of you now, good. Um, joking aside, let's say for example, your campaign is, something like, you know, find out how to get the most money from your home when you sell it, or something like that. You guys will come up with something much more interesting. Imagine they sign up for that and receive a report, but every single week, they get an automated email, right? In the context of whatever it is you're sending out to them. Now, this is nothing new, and a lot of you have already signed up for a list like this. Like, have you ever signed up for a product or a service, and then every single week they're sending you, mm -hmm. uh, hey, Anna Maria, we haven't heard from you for a while, you know, what did you think about this product? Like, you know, is there blah, 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 whatever else, mm -hmm. right? Those are not people typing up those messages. Those were emails that were already pre-written, right? But a lot of you are not really leveraging this technology. So for example, let's say your giveaway, your value item was the Remax Hallmark uh, Home Sellers Guide, right? And your ad campaign is find out how to get the most amount of money when you sell your home, right? Or 10 mistakes to avoid when selling your home, that could lose you tons of money, right? If that's your report, and your free value of item was that Remax Hallmark um, item, right? The Remax Hallmark uh, Seller's Guide, that's your value item, right? And they download it on the first day, what do you do for the rest of the campaign, right? What I would do is I'd break that down into chunks. Now again, there are companies like this, and one, one of the things that I'm trying to do this year is team up with content marketing companies so that instead of you guys having to type this stuff up, because again, you guys are good at selling houses, everything else you should either get somebody else to do or you know, get, get it outsourced, right? So I'm working with content marketing companies that will give us free guides, books, reports, all that sort of stuff, so that all you have to do is plug it into your system. Does that sound great? Mm -hmm. That right? Customizable. Of course, you can do whatever you want, customizable, yes. Okay. So if they subscribe and they get an automated email mm -hmm. about Yes. Like a one-on-one -on -one yes. instead of a... That's a good point. So remember we talked about scaling, right? Because if you're going to build this out and you want to be effective at communicating to a lot of people, when you send out postcards to 5,000 people in a farm area, do you personalize every single one of them? You don't, right? Because the first point of contact is taking them from that top part of the funnel and do something more refined, right? At every single stage, you're reading out the prospects who are not qualified. So who are the prospects who are not qualified? Some of them may not be selling their home right now. Some of them might just be curious. Some of them may not even live there, but somehow they end up getting onto your campaign list, whatever it is, right? As it goes down, you start to create campaigns that are more targeted. So MailChimp can get more sophisticated, meaning if they do certain things, it triggers another set of campaigns. So for example, and this is where it gets crazy, I, I don't wanna overcomplicate your understanding of this, but because of you, I'm gonna have with you, right? But Basically, let's say you're sending your bi-weekly report and there's a little line in your email that said, are you thinking of selling your home within the next three months? Now click here. Once they click that and open up a certain link, it could actually trigger an entirely different campaign. So they'll still receive the bi-weekly, which is manually sent, but now all of a sudden it's a three-month drip campaign week after week. Hey, you know, uh, great to hear that you're thinking of selling within the next three weeks. It's gonna say, hey, Robert, 
it's great to hear that you're selling within the next few weeks. You know what? There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff that we got to do be between now and then. So over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to send you some tips to start getting you ready for the sale of your home. Right? Then week one, week two, <coughs> week three, week four. <coughs> and at the end of it, it's going to keep saying, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. So these are emails that were written as if it were you talking to them, but because it's so pre preset. And believe me, like you guys send the same stuff to everybody anyway. When you do a Mike Ferry door knocking script, when are you planning on moving? You know, how long have you lived here? Where did you move from? Where would you move to next? Right, blah, 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 whatever. It's the same stuff. So same thing with the drip campaign. There's only so many things that you can present, right? So for example, getting your home ready for staging, uh, negotiating tips, why you shouldn't list through Fizzbooms, right? All of that sort of stuff. Because they know? email and respond back to you based on those well, you, just, you sort of design, yeah, so any email back to you will go, for example, if this is a response to Tori, that's why Tori put in that from email address. It will go back to you. So in some of my emails I put, like from my recruiting emails, right, what are you having challenges with right now? Send me an email and uh, let's work on it together. So when I write the emails, I'm thinking about one individual person, mm -hmm. except when I do it on the system, it's to scale. So this is why if, you're, if your campaign is all of GTA, every buyer, every seller, it's not going to work, why? Because there's no clear message, right? But if it's first time buyer, then it doesn't matter where you are in the GTA, your first time buyer problems are gonna be the same. So all of my emails, I'm thinking about writing to a first time buyer. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's get back to this. So Tori, welcome message, welcome message to the list. And that list is uh, North Riverdale, click begin. Right, and then now here's where we start doing the automations. And again, you can do one email automation, you can start doing 52 emails if you wanted to. And that's what I'm working with the content marketing company. So before you start going all out, I mean, you could if you want to, but I'm trying to see if we can get drip campaigns going, right? Uh, but here basically you're typing up an email. Your email subject might be, uh, thanks for signing up, here's your free report. Right? Well, thanks for signing up, here's your free report. There you go. Instant gratification. They sign up at 2 a.m., they get it at 2.01, right? If they sign up like at 4 p.m., they get it at 4.01 p.m., whatever it happens to be, right? Preview text, preview text appears in the emails if the email client allows for it. That's the first few lines that we see, right? So for Tori, she wants to congratulate her, right? So imagine you get a preview line, congratulations. I mean, each of this, like whatever you put on there is up to each and every single one of you, right? So keep that in mind, right? There you go, right? Congratulations for what? Well, you're officially becoming a North Riverdale expert, right? Uh, from name Tori Cajun, very personable, right? It's not Remax, whatever, you know what I mean? But a Remax branding will be in the email. So go ahead and go down, I'll click next. Template, you choose one, right? Now you can do crazy stuff with this. You can put in graphics, if you have a graphic designer, put up a design together. Um, or you can keep it a simple text, right? So go down if you want. You can just keep it as a simple text. So here's a simple text format. So for years I was sending just a simple text format, but the open rates were crazy, right? For specific, like if you play around with the, with the um, email subjects, and if it's relevant content, people will open it. Like I had one experience where, like I was lazy, a lot of us realtors are once in a while, right? And I missed a month, and guess what happened? Somebody from that email list messaged me. It's like, I didn't get your report this month, right? And I started getting into conversation. Oh, are you thinking of selling? I have somebody who wants to move and buy a two bedroom, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, no joke, I have the email in my inbox still, right? So this stuff starts to happen if you set this up right. So then you would put in here, um, let's make it a bit more personal, right? So let's say, put, let's say hi, I'm gonna show you how to do merge tags. So hi, and then go to merge tags. And if you click on the merge tags, put first name. So now it's gonna say, hi, Anna Maria. Instead of just, hey, right? Thanks for signing up for my report. Or thanks for signing up for their North Riverdale report. Right? Now here's the thing. This does require a little bit more labor intensive activity compared to let's say my condo seller's guide. I don't ever have to change anything in the condo seller's guide because it's not market specific. It's not market sensitive in terms of data. Right, selling a condo is selling a condo. So think about it, if you wanna create a campaign you have a choice of either having these variables where you do have to change it every couple of you know, weeks or months, or if you do something called evergreen content. Evergreen content means no matter what, it's gonna be the same content, right? 
So here, you do have to update this on a constant basis, but that's just part of it, right? So thanks for signing up for the North River Day report. The report will hit your inbox on the first and last Tuesday of every month. On the next line, she may want to create some variable here. So uh, you, could, you could say, over the past two weeks, X number of homes have sold, right? And every time she updates the report, she's gonna have to go into this welcome message and update it again. Why? Because the new people coming into the list are not going to get that report until a week or two weeks later. Does that make Can sense? Can I make that like even a, a six month kind of graph or yeah. like a, yeah. So if you want, it's a smart be... idea. If you want to make it elongated so that you're not updating it as much, mm -hmm. you can make the first report like a complete summary, right? Of what has happened in the past or whatever, right? And so maybe you update it only once a month, right? And you insert year over year there. Right? Or a neat thing is this, and here's a trick for you. If you don't want to update the content of this report, right, what you do is you can create a video GIF, like a thumbnail, and just say click on this button to see the most latest report. And then you can recreate, then you have to create sort of technical, but you put it into a link that will redirect it to whatever the current video is. So instead of you updating this email, you only have to update the redirect. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah. If you don't know how to do it, let me know. But that's how I would cheat. So, so I would have an image. you do a video telling them what's going on, yeah. mm -hmm. and then you've got an, a link to your yes. YouTube video yeah. or something like that? So if I don't want to change this email over and over again, because you're gonna have to keep finding this email, right? I would put a link, I would put a thumbnail, like a permanent thumbnail mm -hmm. of me like holding up, or you know, doing some kind of crazy stuff, like an animated GIF. Right, that says click here for free report. You know how mm -hmm. those things work, right? Mm -hmm. And when they click on it, there's a redirect function that will push them to the current report right away, right? Because remember, you're sending a bi-weekly report manually anyway. Mm -hmm. So you can oh, use that. The link yes. to that update. Exactly. And you can use Mac Center, the Remax URL redirect if you want to, or you can use something like Bitly, right? Or if you have your own domain, you can play around with your domain to use forwarders. Does that make sense, right? Yeah. So now we've got this part. And once Tori, we're not gonna finish this part up, but you get the point here, right? Once Tori creates this welcome message, the moment somebody signs up on that landing page and gets added to the list, right? They're gonna receive this message. So let's just pretend we finish this, save and close that, and then save and continue. So here, you've got trigger, one day after subscribers join your list. We don't want one day, we want instantaneously. So we click edit on that, and we wait, uh, click on this, and then go to immediately, right? Mm -hmm. The trigger could be a day, hour, or a week, or whatever it is. Um, you can also trigger it when subscribers are imported. So let's say you're doing a manual import of your client list into this. It could also trigger it, right? So click update trigger. So if you click both, you click immediately, and then the other one. It'll do it immediately when you sign up, but right. and then when you're at the menu. Import is different. So somebody signing up from your list is one function. Mm -hmm. Import is you have an Excel file of all of your past clients who live in North Riverdale, and you've just set up this list and you want to import them all in, right? So that's a different, two different functions. So if, if you import somebody manually, it will also trigger that email, mm -hmm. which means they don't have to go into the landing page themselves. You did it yourself, right? So now we click on next and then now it's ready to go right there's something here go click on email details if you don't mind this one uh, it's right here. Uh, email details oh yeah. okay scroll down there's something missing so keep going keep going default text default content text. so click on resolve uh, oh i see mailchimp is really smart if you guys forget to change one of the blocks, like the very top, it's time to design your email, it's not gonna make you look stupid and send this email out. You know what I mean? Right, we're all guilty of doing these kinds of things. So, now click save and continue, now it's gonna let you send stuff out. Right, go click on next, and then now it's ready to go. Right, watch, we're gonna play, we're gonna play around with this. Start sending, now we're gonna play around with this. Click on start sending. I want you to go back to your campaigns. Click on campaigns. Click on your mailing, uh, your uh, North Riverdale market report, third one down, landing page, oh no, go back. Go oh, back. sorry. It's okay, no worries. 
Uh, third one down, North Riverdale Market Report. Uh, we're going to preview this, so click on uh, uh, click on Edit Design, Edit Design, and Preview. So this is not live yet, right? Uh, but we can just click on it live, and it's going to go up, and it's going to give you a URL. But we're just going to preview. So go down, and I want you to play around with this. I want you to put your email address and your first name. Talk. Has even added to the list. Now remember, this, thing is, this is something that could be changed too in the settings. It could say, thanks for signing up. You can receive your first email right away. Check your inbox. So now let's go into your inbox. And if it works, great. Ah, if not, I'm in trouble. Uh, click on inbox again. Should be there in a moment. Click on the inbox again. Sometimes it takes time to send. Usually, go to inbox or to the social tab or. Um, it depends on how you have it set up, right? So. How can you set it up to avoid it from going to social? I think promotion? it really depends on the actual mailing list, so like the actual mail software that you use, right? Like so. Gmail or Yahoo. We could go into spam as well. So check your spam. Check your spam. It wouldn't go in. No. Yeah. It may just take a time. Uh, it might just take a bit of time as well. So. So try your spam. Maybe it might just. I don't think it should go. I don't know where my spam is. We'll, we'll set this aside for now, but the idea is it goes into your inbox. It might take a bit of time, or maybe we didn't publish it on, on uh, live yet, so uh, we'll figure that out. Actually, go back to edit landing page. So uh, click on X, and click on save and close here. Now, we could actually publish this, and how you do that is you click on add URL here. Now, if you have a premium account, which is a paid feature, you can use your own domain, it's $99 a year. Otherwise, it's gonna be a MailChimp looking domain, right? So it will generate this code randomly, but you can type in here, North Riverdale Report. So if I type on North Riverdale Report, and I'm gonna show you where this link will become relevant as we do the Facebook ads part of this. Okay, so scroll down. Do I do dot com? No, 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 that, that should be suffice. Click on save, and that's going to become your domain. So click on this one here, where it says URL. Mm -hmm. So click on that, at the very top. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, go back again. I just, sorry, just copy it. Okay, so save and close. And then when we reach that page, just, just highlight it on the, the URL itself. HTTPS. You know, highlight this? Uh, no, over here. Oh, okay. Just copy, and that's it. We're gonna add a page title, so click on add page title, and then we're gonna finish this one up. Uh, page title would be North Riverdale Market Update, something like that. Mm -hmm. Click on save, and click on publish. It may be we didn't publish this uh, landing page, that's why it, uh, So there's your URL, so click on that. And this is what the live one will look like, see? Now you can make it as fancy as you want. You can make a full graphic at the top, you can put the video at the top, you can make it however you want it to look like. Let's try putting it again. So go down and put your name and email address again. We'll wait for the mail to come in, but click on Facebook for now. Mm -hmm. Oh, there it is. Oh, well, that's the uh, notification. Oh, right? Yeah. So click back on there again. Uh, inbox, right? Let's see if the new report comes in. 
When stuff like this happened and you got to do technical troubleshooting, maybe we didn't connect the welcome Harry. message. There it is, you got it? Yeah. So, no. Wait, no. Is it, no? no? Okay. Is it so a couple of things could have happened. Maybe we didn't connect the welcome message. Maybe it's taking a bit of time. Um, but that's something we can check. Your two and from is the same. Hmm? Your two and from. Could be that too. Like it could be detecting that your two and from is the same email address. So it could be confused. Oh, it just says it's a new subscriber. Yes. But receiving the email might be good. There's a lot of things that could happen. So if we put in our own email address, maybe it would work. You can't, you can't add yourself to the mailing list? Uh, you can, but I've seen... Just to check the old something. Okay, hold on, let me take a look. Uh, I think I know what it is. But anyway, we'll skip, this part for, we'll skip that part for now. We're going to go into Facebook and show you how to quickly put an ad together so that you can lead people into a landing page, right? Try to do it in another 10 minutes, okay? Yeah. I don't want you guys to avoid rushing out of traffic, especially if you go to Durham or <laughs> York or wherever else. You have a Facebook yeah. ad business page, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so go to the drop down and we're gonna create an ad. So go click on create ads. Uh, drop down. And then create ads. Yeah. Right there. And then press okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an ad that goes into the landing page itself. Where is it create ads? Am I doing it again? Um, create ads. Click on manage ads. Manage pages? Uh, ads. Oh, manage ads. Left on this one now. I'm gonna move, sorry. Okay. Now you see where it says create? We're gonna create an ad there on the top left. So we're gonna create complete campaigns. Now Facebook changes every couple of days, weeks. So if you thought you knew how to create an ad, just like I did, it changes, right? What we're doing here is a traffic ad. Now we teach a course about lead generation ad, which means everything you've just seen us do, you could actually create that as an entire Facebook ad native to Facebook itself. Meaning you don't really need MailChimp for that part, the landing page part. You still need your mailing list, and then there's an integration called Zapier, which we've used that before. The Zapier takes your contact from one platform and inputs it into the other. So for example, it would take it from a Facebook lead and put it into your MailChimp, right? That's a whole course altogether. Today what we're gonna do is drive traffic to that landing page, and then that's it, we're done. Uh, so click on traffic, and then go down. Yep, we're gonna go down. Campaign name, we're gonna call it North Riverdale Home Report or House Report or Market Report. And then we're gonna kind of press on continue. And then once we're here, ad set name, North Riverdale Market Report, you can name it the same thing. So at the very top, which is CA18. Oh, yep. right that? Yep, just change it to North Riverdale uh, Market. Is it? <laughs> yeah, it is. Would you say doing one um, like by Mailchimp or Facebook is one easier or more effective than the other? Uh, well, it depends on how you're promoting your landing page. So if you're promoting your landing page not on Facebook, then you need a fixed landing page. If your entire campaign is to be run within Facebook, meaning your, pure, your lead generation is purely Facebook or, or Instagram based, then you could do it right in Facebook. So it depends on where your traffic's coming from is the answer. So for example, if you're doing a postcard campaign, what's your homework in North Riverdale? Uh, visit www.whatever.com. Whatever that landing page should not be in Facebook, okay. right? Because you need it to direct to a certain address. But if your entire lead generation is online based, then yes, you could do the entire thing on Facebook, yeah. right? Which is a whole, everything else with the automation, mailing list, all that stuff is the same, except for the landing page part. Uh, Facebook has sort of a built-in landing page capacity to it, so you can lead, um, it's a lead form that they use, yeah. so you can actually put all the information online, right? And John, there's an address for the, let's say, Facebook campaign, there's an address, right? On yes. The address yes. Can you use that for a postcard? It's going to be a bit challenging, why? Number one, they may not have a Facebook account. Number oh, two, you yeah. may force them to sign into Facebook when they don't want to. That's true. Uh, they may be on a phone, right? Facebook lead ads are great when you have a purely Facebook slash Instagram targeted audience and they're using their phone and they see your ad, what's your homework, click, 
right? But that's a whole other course, right? It is relatively simple once you know these basics, but um, I'm happy to guide you guys through that. And the requirements are, again, you're, you have to be comfortable shooting your, no, it's not for me, it's for you. Uh, Facebook video ads are very effective, so you have to be comfortable shooting yourself on video. And again, there's tons of variations, which we'll talk about in the end if you guys stick around. Um, traffic, offer, audience, so go down. So for audience, what was the postal code again, M4K, was it? Okay, so go down. And when we target the audience, what we want is location. If you click on location, people who live in this location. Why people who live as opposed to everyone? Some more chart. What does that mean, people who live in this location? They own, they, own. they own, likely they own. So Facebook buys tons of data. Don't ask me where, it's not my business, but they know where you live. Let's just put it that way. And it's not even just because of IP. We can cross-reference tons of stuff, right? So if you live in a particular location and you're using Facebook, chances are Facebook will be able to find you, right? So people who live in this location, if you put everyone in this location, it means all of us are in this area right now, right? So for a realtor, we're targeting for home sellers, but, but put everyone in this location, and they target this area. Even if we don't live here, we're gonna see the app. That's helpful in some places. So for example, let's say you're selling a new condo downtown, and you're targeting people who live in, who live in King West, but also people who happen to pass by King West, who are dining inside King West and happen to be browsing their phone. So you would put everyone in this location. So people who live there and people who are passing by there or dining at a restaurant there would see that app, right? And then you could sell them a King West condo, right? So here we put M4K, people who live in the location. Age, what would be your target? Um, <coughs> Between 30 and 50. 30 to 50, yeah, what's, what's 25 the age? 25. 25, so a 25 year old owns a home in North Riverdale, typically? Well, no, they don't own. They don't no. own? So no. for this, yeah, it's probably. So if you're targeting home sellers, yeah. think of the age group yeah. that the home seller yeah. Is it? Yeah. And that's what you would. Why? You don't want to waste your money on 18 year olds who don't even own the house. So maybe right? 35. Plus. So put it, yeah. This is what's great about Facebook versus direct mail. Direct mail is everybody. Just shoot and spray everybody, basically. Here it's you pinpoint a specific target, right? It could be men if you want to deal with men only. It could be women if you want to deal with women only. Right? It could be both, right? Uh, detail targeting, we're not going to get into here, but you could target basically based on interest, gardening, you know, mm -hmm. they like certain sports or, or whatever it is. Now let's click on save this audience, and we're going to call this audience homeowners in North Riverdale, age 35 and up. So what we're doing here is we're going to create an ad that will run to homeowners living in M4K, right, that are age 35 and up, and they're going to see this ad and they're gonna click on the link, which is gonna go to the landing page. Right, it if we're doing that, mm -hmm. interest yeah, expansion off, that's fine. Yeah. Pressing. Daily budget, right? This is one of the things that I really wanna to get to your mind or way of thinking today is that how much money do you think you need to spend in order for you to be able to get a lead? A lot? How much? Uh, 100. 100? Let's say it's less, okay, so depends on target. So some of my mailing campaigns, when I targeted um, back in the Scarborough condo area, it cost me $173 for a lead. A lead is somebody who calls in, right? So let's just be conservative and call it 200, right? Or, you know, let's, let's, let's talk about this range, whatever, 100 to 200 per lead. A lead is somebody who calls in and happens to be interested, right? Now remember, when you're building up a massive list, it's up to you whether to define an email sign up as that person is a lead, or maybe they're just a person who signed up to your mailing list. You know what I mean? So you might have 500 people sign up for your mailing list and it costs you a certain amount, but then it costs you a certain amount too to get one person to call you. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So your definition of lead is very important in this instance, why? If you have no idea what your definition of a lead is, then you may end up wasting your money or you may not end up getting any leads, why? Watch. It costs $100 to get a lead. If your daily budget is $20, how many leads will you get? Mathematics. Four or five. 20 bucks a lead. Sorry, 100 bucks a lead, but you only spent $20. Five days. Five days, one lead. Five days, one lead, right? What is your closing rate with one lead? 
How many leads do you need to make a sale? Four. Four? You guys are really good. <laughs> it's like hitting a home run every four times at bat, right? So again, this is where it starts to get tricky and where a lot of realtors don't keep track of their numbers. Why? Because you might be confused with getting a, a name on your email as a lead. That may not be a lead. It might just be somebody signing up to get information from you. So now you've got to come up with several different numbers. How many people do I need to sign up on my mailing list via email before I get that one person that says, hey, Tori, we're actually thinking of moving in the next couple of months. Can you come out and see our place? Right, this is where the numbers start to get. Well, we gotta change our thinking around to the terms that they use right. for how they charge. Exactly, so now, with Robert, exactly what Robert said. What we have to do is change our way of thinking, and it's because Robert took the course already. <laughs> it's change our thinking to what they use to charge, meaning, what we're going for here are subscribers, right? Within those subscribers, yes, we're going to get leads, but the first level of thinking that you gotta get is that you're paying to get people into your list. The question becomes, how many people do I need to send to this landing page before I get a subscriber? And then from that subscriber, how many subscribers do I need before I get a lead? And then from leads to appointments, appointments to listings or contracts, contracts to sales, sales closings. Does that make sense? So ahead of the leads, you have to figure out the number of subscribers before you get an actual lead. And what do they right? charge you based on? And how much they charge. So this is where you have to play around with the numbers. If your expectation is, again, 100 per lead, right? And the cost per subscriber is five bucks, right? Which means five dollars per subscriber, how many before you get a lead? Five times 20. So after 20 subscribers, you would expect to get one lead, right? Does that make sense so far, right? So if your expectation is five bucks per subscriber to sign up to the list, if your daily budget is $20, how many subscribers a day do you get? That's a bit late. Four, right? Five times four, 20, right? So here's the biggest mistake. I get realtors that ask me, you know, John Deere, is five dollars a day a good budget for Facebook ads, right? The answer is, you know, it depends. How much is it gonna cost you before one of two things happen? Number one, you run out of money and your ad goes off and nobody sees it again. Or two, before you get a subscriber, right? So for our recruiting campaigns, it costs anywhere from 10 bucks to $100 per subscriber. Yes, it costs $100 sometimes per subscriber, depending on the ads, right? Same thing when I was doing my marketing. When I was doing on Facebook, it was about 20, 25 bucks per subscriber, right? So on my list, like one of my lists is only about 100 people big. Right, twenty dollars times a hundred is about two thousand. But I was able to generate a sale and a purchase from that particular list. Right, so think about what the commission is versus how much I've spent. Right, if I spent two grand to accumulate, accumulate a list of a hundred people, but I'm able to generate a sale from that, is that a good return? Yes. Yeah. Right. So when you figure out your budget. What I usually recommend is start with like 100 bucks a day for the first three, four, or five days, right? And that's where you start to gauge. I mean, that's a lot of money, yeah. But if you want to do this seriously, we're talking about, you're not talking about like five bucks, 10 bucks, that's like a happy meal. You know what I mean? You, you can expect to get a, you spend for a happy meal, you expect to get a sale from a, you know what I mean? Right, it's ridiculous, but that's what's happening, right? So I would spend 100 bucks a day for a couple of days, three, four, or five days until I start to see how many subscribers I get, right? So if I spend 100 bucks on one day and I get 10 subscribers, that's $10 a subscriber, right? Am I happy with that? Well, the answer to that is how many of these subscribers are opening up their emails? How many of them are actually interacting with me, right? All of those sorts of things, right? <laughs> any questions? So I don't want you to come to me and want, like I'm happy to send, like this is part of what I do, is set these campaigns up for you guys. But don't come to me with a $5 a day campaign, please. <laughs> like buy me a happy meal and then we'll set up your company, whatever, mm -hmm. right? So if you want to start at 20, hey, again, it's up to you. But remember, at 20, either the ad keeps playing and then runs out and you get no subscribers and then you start again the next day, or you get your first subscriber at seven bucks, 10 bucks, 15 bucks, 20 bucks. Does that make sense, right? And then from that point on, you build up subscriber list, um, we create the ad, so let's, let's put 20 bucks and let's best continue. We're not gonna actually run this until Tori's ready to go. 
this is where we start creating the ad. This is where we're gonna start to finish up and then I'll stay for a bit if you have any questions. Um, you have to have a page because that page is where the ad will appear as, like in terms of the profile. Right, so you know when an ad look appears and it says the page name of it? The page name of that, of whatever your page is, is, where, is what will be visible on the ad. And I'll show you what I mean by that, right? So if you scroll down, we're gonna go and pick a simple one called single image. So click single image. And if you scroll down again, you can actually browse the library for free stock images. So click on free stock images. Sorry, browse library means your own images. Free stock image means you can type in, for example, house. I don't know if you're gonna find North Riverdale one. No. no? Okay. Well, you could try, or you could upload the image, up to you. I can upload the image. Okay, if you have a North Riverdale home, uh, is it on this computer though, or no? Yeah, because I just did that map from this computer, okay. so I could use You that. could use a map, right? Yeah. So if you're using a map, you can upload your map, right? So it's right there, North, North Riverdale. So this would be your ad. Now remember that the images you put has to be in compliance with the right. Facebook. So this one might be a bit too small. So just go to free stock images just for the example. Okay. You don't even need to have your own images. You can put a free stock image up, but of course it doesn't look genuine, mm -hmm. right? If you're putting you know, Durham homes for sale, find out what your, your Durham home is worth, and you put a Florida house on there, it doesn't make sense, <laughs> right? So. Click on a house, make it seem like it's a North Riverdale house. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah, like that one, maybe that one. <laughs> right? Yeah, just pick one for example. This looks like it's probably an Oshawa or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely not. Yeah, it's true. I mean, come on. Right? We'll just play around with it. So you see here? This is your page name. So because you can have multiple pages, make sure it matches the campaign that you want to do. If, you're, if you don't have a social, uh, so if you don't have an Instagram account associated with your business page, it will just use your Facebook business page profile when somebody clicks on it on the social media, on Instagram social media, right? So here, again, when we start creating a, the text copy, right, the headline would be, like let's click on headline first, that's the more down here, uh, all the way yeah. down, headline, yeah. What's your North Riverdale home worth? Or how much did your neighbor's home sell for? Right? And I know you see a lot of these things. This is sort of the correct proctor style slash, you know, uh, clickbait they call it, right? You know? So there's a lot of these kinds of text used when the realtor is almost, you know, what did it sell for? Right? The more intriguing it is, and the more eye-catching it is, the more somebody will likely see your ad. Now, one of the tips that I discovered with these ads is try not to make it look as good as possible. Now, that might sound counterintuitive, right? When you think about it, when you're browsing Facebook and Instagram, whose pictures do you see? Whose videos and photos do you see? Your friends, your family, uh, your colleagues. Do they look polished? Do they look like a... Uh, you know, a, a massive ad company with millions of dollars in, you know, billings, is it made it for them? No. So, one of the things that I want you to try out is this. If you're doing this for, let's say, Ajax or uh, Richmond Hill or whatever, just try going in front of a street and take a picture or a selfie or a photo or a landmark and just use your phone and upload that photo there. It's going to look like it's part of the feed. That's what you want. If it looks too clean, like you can tell when like you know BMW or Nissan ads start coming up because it's so. But imagine if it was somebody who took a picture of the BMW and hasn't washed it for a couple of weeks. You know what I mean? It looks like it's somebody's post, and people start to pay attention. Mm -hmm. Like we're all good at weeding out the ads, right? So when an ad looks something like this, this this looks okay. But if you took this is why I, I wouldn't be hesitant to go out there and with my own camera take a picture of it myself or when you're doing videos. When we get to the advanced stuff of this, when you're doing video ads, just use your own phone. Don't worry about the quality of it, as long as the sound quality is good, right? Because people will start to watch it. So, um, for those of you who stick around, I'll show you some of my examples, right? But website URL, I mean, if you registered a domain like NorthRiverdaleHomes.com, you could put that as your URL. Just give it a try so we can see. Put in a real one? Yeah, just make one. Make one. Northriverdalehomes.com. 
How many of you are doing Facebook ads right now? How many of you have been successful at it? Like you got leads, sales, you good? Okay. I'm running an ad right now okay. to my website and uh, from my resident, I, they uh, signed up. Okay. I've had almost 200 clicks on that, <laughs> but not one sign up. Not one sign up. So one stuff like this I work on. Conversion, like all the different problems and issues that you might have. Um, so if you have that stuff happening, feel free to approach me. How much are you spending for that? I spent so far 15 bucks. It's only been running for three days. It's five dollars a day. Mm -hmm. yeah. Be good. So you scroll down. Click. You think one person would yeah, sign that? Please scroll down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, because it's, I'm, I'm just trying it out, I didn't want to spend so much. Yeah, initially. that's true. Like, right. Yeah, I don't want to trial and error yeah. first. Right? So we will yeah. we will do like troubleshooting yeah. on these ads, like okay. you know all that sort of thing. Um, there's a certainly a reason for it. If you start to spend a certain amount of money, you're not seeing actions happen. Uh, we have to do a bit of tweaking in order for us to be able to see. It could be the offer, it could be the ad, it could be the target audience, or it could be the technical aspects of the ad, linking from that from to whatever the page is. So there's a lot of different things. One of the biggest mistakes is some realtors run an ad and link it to their website, and it's just the home page of the website. Is that what you're doing? Oh, no, no, this is actual property. It's an actual property, yeah. right? So you go to design. Again, what is your objective? Awareness, so people see it. Because if you're running an awareness campaign and you can tell yourself, look, 200 people clicked on this ad. That's how many people I'm bringing to your property, like the property page. Well, then you've achieved your objective. But your, your objective is for somebody to call you from that, then they may not be, maybe they don't like the property, right? Maybe they don't like the offer, maybe, you know, all, a whole lot, lot of different things. So if I was doing a campaign to, to promote and boost a property to show my homeowners how much I'm marketing it to, that might be effective and it might be worth it at that point, right? Remember, again, you're not gonna get a call from, it's just like an open house, what are the chances of you selling that particular house? Same thing, you're driving traffic to a property page, but you may not wanna buy that, mm -hmm. right? So in some websites, there might be a pop-up that says sign up for a free report, or you know, book a showing, or all that sort of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, text-wise, um, you can write the same thing as on the landing page or similar, uh, instantly receive a report of how much homes you're selling for in our area. How many of you have done a campaign like this? How many what? Have you done, how many of you have done a campaign like this? I've tried it. Mm -hmm. Tried it? I've tried stuff like this. Yeah? yeah? How was it? Um, I think you probably get leads from it if you do it long enough. Yes. You just gotta put the effort and try to do it. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. This is pretty much digital door knocking slash digital yeah. farming. Door knocking part is you're appearing in people's feeds, right? Farming part is once you've got them on your list, you're constantly sending information. And that's where a lot of the realtors fail, right? Is you run the ad, it's great, you know, you're spending money, then you start to realize, hey, I don't have any sales from this, I just stop it. And that's where you fail. Right? Just like you start doing a postcard campaign and all of a sudden you just stop it, and then Same that's where you start to fail. Same thing, mm -hmm. except this is the digital version, right? So let's see the ad. Do you want me to confirm? I uh, know, because then no. you start paying for it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> unless you want to, unless you're ready to go. Right, there you go. Beautiful ad, right? So, ladies and gentlemen, the past, well, we started at one, and at two o'clock we started the hands-on stuff. In two hours, uh, Tori was able, and thank you so much, Tori, for doing this for us. He was, thank you. He was able to, from scratch, create a mailing list that did not exist before, create a landing page for that mailing list, right? create a video and upload the video, right? create a uh, Facebook ad, and all she's short of doing is number one, having a video that she's happy with, right? I mean, obviously we use some sort of makeshift neighborhood make-believe stuff, right? Um, and two, actually turning on this ad. That's the only two things she needs, and this campaign will actually go live, right? And then all she has to do on an ongoing basis is go into that mailing list and send out, you know, technicality stuff aside, which is, you know, why didn't this mailing actually send out? I think I have an idea for why that is. Um, there's some intricacies within MailChimp that if your campaign doesn't work when you test it out, come and see me because there's some things that we have to adjust, right? But other than that, it should work out, right? Uh, that's pretty much it. That's what it looks like to create this aspect of it. Now, this is one small sliver of what digital marketing is. 
meaning we can get into more advanced stuff, such as creating blogs, right? So over the nine week course, I talked about how do you create a blog? Why create a blog? So that you have content, SEO marketing, search engine optimization, goes to the blog, the blog goes to the mailing list, landing pages, all that stuff gets integrated. How do you create your own video channel on YouTube so that you can use content marketing on videos to drive people into the landing page? So what I taught you today is one small part of it, which is using this specific strategy to start, uh, which is enough, right, in the, in the past three hours to learn how to start building up a mailing list. But it's part of an even bigger strategy, right? So there's a lot more that we can learn. Now, one of the things that I wanna do before we wrap up, and I'll, I'll take any questions afterwards, is you see how, regardless of where you are in this business, there seems to be a disconnect between what we think we're able to do in terms of marketing and our ability to actually track it so that we can get the results that we need. And that's why I conduct courses like this. Because we are running a business here. Meaning, when you look at the top producing realtors, they know line by line how much they're spending in terms of marketing, how much results they expect. So one of the things that I do in forming this is creating a group where we are all able to help out each other, right, within Remax Hallmark. Um, and one of the things that I do is I gather information and I gather data, which means within Remax Hallmark, I do offer consultation for this, and you guys don't pay for it because you're part of Remax Hallmark. If you're not, and if you don't join Remax Hallmark, <laughs> you will have to pay for it, right, because this is very valuable information. But why don't you have to pay for it with Remax Hallmark? Partly it's a service that we provide to you as part of this great company, but also because I gather data which is in benefit of everybody, meaning what? I'm constantly running these ads for our realtors to see what ads are effective so that I start to share this information with you guys, but also so that I, we can come up with numbers, cost per subscriber, cost per click, cost per lead, cost per sale, how many, how big is your database, how big does it have to, do, have to be in order for you to be able to generate sales? And that's the stuff that I start to put together um, and teach in these courses, right? So if you're interested in any of that stuff, and if you're interested in putting these campaigns, again, your budget should be decent, right? I will teach you how to create a lot of this stuff. If you want more advanced stuff, you will have to outsource it and get paid. We do have people who create that stuff for us, right? But there's also that one thing that I ask you for is that I, I do want to be able to track your results anonymously so that when I do present it, like next year, uh, when I do the same course, I'll be able to tell you guys. Right, some of the early information I do get that I've been sharing with you today, like you know, twenty dollars, ten dollars per lead, and all that sort of thing, I have compiled. So when I taught my Facebook lead generation, I do have an entire sheet about different campaigns and how much it costs those realtors to generate leads. So I do have all of that information in case you want to know. Right? But that's pretty much it. Thank you so much, Tori. Thank Thanks you. for staying. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank you. If you have any questions, I'm still here, so feel free to ask me. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll see you in the office. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right Ready to order? Yeah. Thanks, Dodger. Yeah, send me. Yeah, we'll do it for you guys.